Jose Hernandez was born in French Camp, California in 1962. He is the youngest of four children. His parents were migrant farm workers who would follow the harvest to provide for their family. Well, it was interesting growing up as a kid. Uh, it was very exciting. I mean, it's the only life I knew, so I didn't know I was had it such so rough. We used to spend uh, nine months out of the year in California following the harvest from Southern to Northern California. And of course, you're in three different school districts, at least three different school districts, and then you go back to Mexico for three months. You take homework from here and you do it over there. Uh, not a very conducive environment to get a good education. At the urging of a second grade teacher, the Hernandez family settles in Stockton, California. And that's when our education began to get traction. And that's when we started to learn a lot and become more proficient in English. Aside from attending school, Jose, like all children of migrant farm workers, had to help in the fields. Jose recalls what his father told him after a long and tiring day of picking crops. He said, I'm not going to make you go to school. I'm not going to make you get straight A's in school. But if you ever wonder what life is without an education, you have the distinct privilege of living your future now. Because this is it. Welcome to the future. This is your future without an education. In 1972, the live television broadcast of Apollo 17, Landing a Man on the Moon, made a profound impression on 10-year-old Jose. I mean, that's when it really hit me. I said, you know, this is what I want to do. I want to be an astronaut when I grow up. That evening, I shared that dream with my father. Instead of discouraging Jose from such a big dream, his father gave him hope. He said, first, mijo, you have to decide what you want to be in life. I said, I want to be an astronaut. I figured one out of five, I'm almost there. Second, he said, you got to recognize how far you are from there. I said, well, I, I thought to myself, I can't be any farther than this. I'm the son of a migrant farm worker. No offense, but that was reality. He said, third, you got to draw yourself a road map from where you know where you're at to where you know you want to go. Because that's what's going to guide you in life to reach your goal. I said, what's the fourth one, Papa? He said, you're doing it already, mijo. You got to stay in school. No substitute for an education. Fifth and final, he said, he pointed outside. He says, you know that effort you put out working in the fields every Saturday and Sunday, seven days a week during the summer? You know that hard work you put in there? I said, see, Papa? He pointed to my books on the kitchen table. He said, you put it here. Jose believed in his father's advice, but living in the barrio was not very conducive for a young boy's dreams and aspirations. I used to be very good friends with uh, three individuals that, you know, one committed suicide, another one overdosed, and the other one is still running around in the streets uh, uh, up to probably not, not good things. And, and yet these were my true friends when I grew up as a kid. It's the parental guidance that makes the biggest difference in the world. After graduating high school, Jose majors in electrical engineering at the University of the Pacific in Stockton and pursues graduate studies at the University of California. My parents, they didn't have the opportunity to get a education, and so they did everything in their power to make sure we were afforded that opportunity. Jose lands a job with Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in 1987. There, he helps develop the first full-field digital mammography imaging system. It was a tremendous breakthrough in the field of early detection of cancer. That's the one I'm most proud of because I know that this device that we developed, we co-developed in at Lawrence Livermore Lab, I know that this device has saved lives. In 1992, in pursuit of his dream to become an astronaut, Jose applies to the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, but his application is denied. I got rejected six times in a row, and I remember the sixth letter, 
I crumpled it and threw it in the bedroom. And of course, my wife was picking up the bedroom, and she read this. She 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 undid it from the ball that I had wrinkled it and read it, and she said, "What's this?" And I said, "Well, NASA rejected me again for the sixth time." I said, "I think I'm going to give up." And she looked at me and she said, "That doesn't sound like you." Jose's biggest cheerleader was his wife. With her encouragement, Jose improves his qualifications by becoming a pilot, certified scuba diver, and a marathon runner. Jose also goes to work for NASA as an engineer, hoping to improve his chances of being selected an astronaut. On February 1st, 2003, the unthinkable happens. The space shuttle Columbia breaks apart while re-entering the atmosphere over Texas, killing all seven crew members on board. And it was our group that was instrumental in helping find what that root cause was, which was a piece of foam that hit the leading edge of the wing, making a hole during ascent. And of course, during entry, that hot plasma went in and, and, and basically melted the aluminum frame of the wing that caused that catastrophic failure. But it was our group that helped out in that, and I think that gave me the exposure so that when for the third time I was in the final 100, the 12th year of applying, that was when I finally got selected and became part of the 19th class of astronauts in 2004. In 2009, after years of training, Jose flew aboard Space Shuttle Discovery as a mission specialist. Jose, together with six other astronauts, were to deliver needed supplies and science equipment to the International Space Station. I remember pushing myself and saying, the first thing I want to do is I want to see the world. What struck me as beautiful was the fact that you couldn't make out where Canada ended and the U.S. began. You look further down south, you couldn't make out where the U.S. ended and Mexico began, and so on and so forth. And I said, wow, we, I had to go out of this world to get that aha moment that borders are human-made concepts. And wouldn't it be a great idea to get all our world leaders to get that same aha moment? Because I assure you that if we did, our world would be a much more peaceful place than it is today. After 15 days in space, Discovery landed, just a few miles from where Jose grew up picking strawberries. Returning home, Jose had successfully completed his space mission and fulfilled a very special childhood dream. Jose now heads a foundation called Reaching for the Stars, which is to inspire kids to dream the impossible and to emphasize that through education, anything is possible. He also wrote his autobiography, Reaching for the Stars, the story of a migrant farm worker turned astronaut. Jose's parents, Salvador and Julia, now live comfortably on a small farm that Jose helped to acquire. Both are very proud of their son's accomplishments. Sí, Pepito, muchas gracias por todo lo que has hecho por nosotros, Pepito. Te damos las gracias, tu mamá y yo, y estamos muy contentos porque realmente nos has puesto en un lugar que nunca esperábamos estar o llegar a, a, a estar como estamos ahorita. Y gracias a ti, te doy las gracias de todo corazón y ojalá que sigamos viviendo algunos años más para seguirte dando las gracias. José, te quiero mucho, mijo, y estoy muy orgullosa de ti. Estoy orgullosa de tu carrera y me gusta mucho. Te quiero mucho, mijo. Nos has dado mucha felicidad. José's example of perseverance is a testament to those who believe that it doesn't matter where you start in life. It matters only where you finish. It's okay to dream big. My parents, my father in particular, gave me the license to dream big. He gave me that five ingredient ingredient recipe coupled with perseverance that allowed me to reach for my own star. Anything is possible with hard work and a good education and you have the recipe to reach for your own stars. Nothing is impossible. Todo se puede. On behalf of the Board of Directors and the staff of the United States Leadership Institute and the 34th National United States Hispanic Leadership Conference, 
we salute you.